So today we're going to go over how to create a simple Adonis.js package. And for this package, we're going to be creating one called Adonis.js Honeypot. This is a package that I recently created a couple of weeks ago and have been sitting on waiting to make this lesson. So Honeypot's essentially just a way to prevent bots from submitting your forms successfully, uh, kind of like a CAPTCHA system would. This will append fields into our form that the bots can see, but that users cannot. So at a high level, this package is going to allow us to install it, configure it within our project, which will add in our provider, which will add in our types, which will add in our configuration file into your project. And then lastly, it will give us a namespace where we can then register a specific honeypot middleware. And it will also add a global component that we can use to append into our forms to specify that they should have the honeypot fields. So there's a package called MRM, and this is a command line tool that helps you keep your configuration files for open source projects in sync. And this is what Adonis.js uses, and they have their own preset called Adonis.js MRM preset. And we can use this to get a baseline set of tasks that we can execute within our package. And it will generate these things so that everything is nice and concise and consynced with what the Adonis.js community and the core packages as well are actually using. In addition to that, before we get started, you're also going to want to have a GitHub repository or some other repository sourcing created and ready to go so that you can grab your origin URLs. Okay, so step number one for us is to go ahead and dive into our terminal and create a folder for our package. So I'm gonna go ahead and make dir, and I'm gonna call this Adonis.js Honeypot Lesson, since I already have one called Adonis.js Honeypot, and let's cd into it. Once we're in it, let's go ahead and initialize npm, so npm init. We can skip through most of these. However, whenever we come to the entry point, we will want to specify build providers honeypot provider.js. And this will be a file that's created after we build our project pointing to a specific honeypot file. Uh, for this particular package, this will be the entry point. Depending on what package you are building, your entry point may be different. Let's go ahead and hit enter on that. We'll skip over testing for this lesson just to keep things short. Uh, whenever it comes to the GitHub repository, let's go ahead and copy the HTTPS URL for that off of GitHub and paste that in there. Skip over the keywords for now. You can add an author if you'd like. The license will do MIT. And so that looks good to me. Now that that's created a package.json file for us, let's go ahead and install MRM and the Adonis.js MRM preset. So this will be npmi as a dev dependency, MRM, and at Adonis.js MRM preset. Okay, now that we have that created, let's go ahead and open up our project within our text editor of choice. Let's dive into the package.json file and let's add an additional script called MRM. And this will be MRM hyphen hyphen preset equals at Adonis.js slash MRM preset. So this is going to essentially just run the MRM command using the Adonis.js preset as the MRM preset. In turn, this is what's going to provide us all of these tasks that we can now run with MRM. So for example, we'll want to run npm run MRM init to initialize the MRM within this particular directory. We can go ahead and paste in our GitHub origin URL again, select the minimum node version that this project will support. 16.13 is fine with me. This is not written by an Adonis.js core team, so go ahead and hit no. You can hit yes on this if you want the table of contents for the readme file to be automatically generated. We'll skip over that for right now. And we selected MIT for the license, so I'll select MIT there. If you want any CI services, you can go ahead and select those now. Otherwise, you can add them in at a later point in time using the MRM command. Uh, we'll skip over those for now. Same here for the robots for issues. Uh, we'll go ahead and skip over that. You can always add those in later. And you can see that this went ahead and initialized our GitHub repository and added the origin in there as well. On this computer, I still have the default set up to master. I'm going to go ahead and just set that to main. There we go. So we're good to go ahead and run any of these tasks. So for example, there is a git ignore template task here. So we can go ahead and run npm run mrm git ignore, and that will create a dot git ignore file for us within our project with some default values. We can do the same thing with license. So npm run mrm license, which will generate out our MIT license. And now before we continue on, we're also going to want to run a command called package package is going to be this package file generation step, which will initialize our package for testing capabilities. It will add some scripts into our package.json, and it will also set up TypeScript for us as well. So let's go ahead and run npm run mrm package. And if you're looking at these titles and you're not quite sure what the actual mrm command name is, you can always scroll on up 
to the folders that are directed here and all of the different tasks have a different folder. So for example, the header for the package one was called package file generation, but we can see that the folder itself is just called package. So the command that we need to run is package as well. So this created a TypeScript config.json file and it updated our package.json file. So if we dive into here, we can see it extended the Adonis.js MRM preset base configuration. And whenever it comes to our package.json, it appended some scripts into the file here. So next up, we are going to want to add some peer dependencies. So let's go ahead and add those in now. In order for this package to properly work and get everything that it needs, we're going to need the Adonis.js core, session, and view. So we'll set those up as our peer dependencies. So let's do at Adonis.js core, set this up for 5.1.0, Adonis.js session, which we'll make optional here in a second is 6.0.0 and at Adonis.js view, which we'll set up at 6.0.0 as well. Let's go ahead and set session to be optional. So we'll set this up as a peer dependency meta at Adonis.js session. Optional is true. Okay, so there we go. Next thing, let's go ahead and take these, copy them down into our dev dependencies so that we have them to work with. And let's also add them into our TypeScript types. So let's jump into our TS config. Underneath our extension here, we'll add compiler options, types, which will be an array. We can just plop these in here and take the uh, version values off of there. So we'll take everything after the colon off, just like so. We can give that a save and let's go ahead and install those dependencies. Okay, so with those installed, we're good to go ahead and actually start writing the code for our package itself. So let's create a folder here called providers, where we will have a honeypot provider.ts file. We can go ahead and create this as just a normal old provider file. So export default class honeypot provider. We will want to specify that this will need an application. So let's go ahead and run public static needs application equals true. And let's go ahead and get our constructor set up with a protected app of type application context. And we'll go ahead and import that in as well. So import application, whoops, sorry, that should be contract, not context. Contract, there we go, application contract from at IOC Adonis core application. And let's go ahead and add in our register and boot methods. So there's register and we'll make boot async. So register is where we're going to bind our namespace and boot is where we're going to add in our view component as a global. So we can go ahead and get register started here. So this app container and we'll want to register this as a singleton and we'll give it the namespace autocasts honeypot. So the namespace is essentially just going to be how we're going to import it. So instead of at IOC Adonis something, it will be at IOC Adocast slash honeypot whenever we go to import this. And then this particular namespace is just going to return back a middleware. So what we'll want to do is import our middleware and return our middleware. So we'll go ahead and save that for right now. And let's go ahead and get started on our middleware. So let's create a new folder here called source. And within here, we'll create another new folder called middleware. And within middleware, we will create a file called honeypot middleware. And we'll go ahead and define this as a class. So export class honeypot middleware. And within here, we're going to want to be able to grab items out of the configuration. So let's go ahead and inject the application context in here as well. So at inject Adonis core application and we're going to want to import those as well so we'll import application contract from at ioc adonis core application and import inject from at adonis js core build and that is within standalone and while we're up here let's go ahead and import the http contact contract as well we will need that for our middleware and that is from at ioc Adonis core HTTP context. Okay. Okay. So any middleware needs a handle function. So let's do public async handle. 
and we'll take the request response session and logger out of our HTTP context contract for that. And that will come with a next function that we can call to continue onward, which will be a function that returns back a promise of void. Within the middleware class, let's go ahead and define some types here. So we'll have a private object of states. We'll have one for valid, which will be one, invalid, which will be two, and missing, which will be three. We'll have another one that's private called supported methods. These will be supported HTTP methods. So this will be post, put, and patch. We'll make use of these within our handle function. So first we'll wanna check if not this supported methods includes our request dot method. Let's go ahead and logger dot warn provided HTTP method request method is not supported. So we'll give some context as to why things failed here. And then from there, we'll just return next so that things continue on. Now we're gonna be creating a configuration file that we can read from here in a minute. But first we're going to want to actually import that config into our middleware, which is why we went ahead and injected the application contract within our middleware. So what that's going to allow us to do is define a private config equals, and now we have access to this dot app dot container and we can resolve a binding for Adonis core config and we can get and we'll name this honeypot dot honeypot config right we are getting some squigglies here um, so if we take a look here experimental support for decorators is a feature that's subject to change in a future release set the experimental decorators option uh, within your TS config so let's go ahead and do that so within our TS config here under compiler options let's add experimental decorators and set that to true. So we can go ahead and save that, jump back into our honeypot middleware there. You see that squiggly is gone. And then for our app to be available, we do want to go ahead and add in a constructor with a protected app of type application contract. There we go. So now we have this app container, resolve bindings, and our get should all be A-OK -okay now. Okay, so we can continue onward now with our handle method. So let's go ahead and grab the honeypot values, which will be defined within the config here. So let's do const and let's say honey values equals request.only. So we're just going to grab out the honeypot values out of our request body, this config fields, and then we're going to want to validate those fields. So we can either do that within the handle method or we can specify a different function on our middleware itself. I think that is the cleaner approach for right now. So let's do private and let's call this validate fields. We'll take in our values, which will be an object with P string of type any. We'll default our state to this states valid. If object keys values dot length equals zero return this states missing because it will be missing all of the honeypot fields since it is zero. <clears throat> so essentially this is just checking whether or not we actually got any honeypot fields. If we didn't, we'll denote that the honeypot fields were missing. And if this middleware is registered, then we would be expecting those fields to be here. So we want to note that those are indeed missing. Otherwise, let's go ahead and loop over them. So for let key in values, if values key. So if any of the honeypot keys actually have a value attached to it, then we'll want to set the state equal to this state's invalid because the honeypot has been completed whenever it should not be. And that should be it. So from there, we should be able to just return back the state. So within our handle function here, let's go ahead and grab the state for our honey values. So const state equals this validate fields, and we'll pass in the honey values. If state equals this state's missing, then we will want to throw no honeypot exception, which we will create here momentarily. If state equals this state's invalid, we'll set our config up to have a couple of options here. So we'll want to check through those options. So if this config flash on failure and this config flash message and 
this config flash key session dot flash this config flash key this config flash message essentially just discerning whether or not we should flash a message to the session and if so what to flash and we're grabbing both of those from the configuration if not this config dot redirect on failure or not this config dot redirect to so now we're discerning whether or not we should redirect the user and if whether or not we have somewhere to redirect them to if we do not then we'll go ahead and just throw honeypot failure exception which we'll create here momentarily as well otherwise we want to return response redirect this config redirect to if we do not pop inside of this if statement then we are good to go ahead and just await next. So let's go ahead and create those two exceptions. So we'll start with the honeypot failure. So within our source here, let's create a new file, which will create a new folder here called exceptions for those to house within. And we'll create honeypot failure exception.ts. We will want to import exception from at poppins utils, which I believe comes with the Adonis.js core. And then we will want to export class honeypot failure exception, which will extend the exception public static invoke return new this honeypot validation failed. We can set a status. We could put this off into the config if you wish, but we will set this statically for right now. And then we'll define a code for this particular error as e honeypot failure so we can go ahead and save that next let's go ahead and do our no honeypot fields found exception so this will be whenever the state is missing so no honeypot fields found exception for the most part we can go ahead and just copy and paste this because it's just going to be the invoke method that changes as well as the name here so no honeypot fields found exception and let's change this message here to all honeypot fields were missing from your form did you forget to add the honeypot component you can leave the status to 403 for now that works and we'll change the error to e no honeypot fields found okay now we can go ahead and plop those in place within our middleware so right down here we have our honeypot failure exception so we can go ahead and just throw honeypot failure exception and we'll just call invoke on that and up here throw no honeypot fields found exception and again we'll just call invoke on that next let's go ahead and set up our types so let's go ahead and create a new folder here called adonis typings and we'll create a file within here called honeypot.ts. And then we'll go ahead and create another file called index.ts. So if you need to add additional typings, you can add them in additional files to keep them clean and then use the index.ts to easily just reference those. So this will be, so we we'll want to do three slashes to do this, a key called reference, give it a path of honeypot.ts. And that's essentially going to kind of import it within this index.ts file. So within the honeypot.ts file here, we're going to want to define the types specific for our Atticast's honeypot namespace. So we will declare module at IOC Atticast's honeypot. Within here, we're going to want to import a couple of Adonis.js types. So we'll import the application contract from at IOC Adonis core application and we'll import HTTP context contract from at IOC Adonis core HTTP context. Okay, next we haven't yet defined this, but let's go ahead and define the type for our configuration. So this will be our honeypot config within the config. We're going to have fields, which will be a string array. We'll have flash on failure, which will be a Boolean. We'll have flash message, which will be a string or null. 
we'll have flash key, which will be a string or null. Again, these are to determine whether or not we should flash a message to the session. And then we'll have our redirect keys. So redirect on failure, which will be a Boolean and redirect to, which will be a string or null. And that's all that we're going to have within our config. Next, we'll want to define our middleware's type. So let's export interface honeypot middleware contract, new application, application contract. And this is for the injection that we're doing into this middleware. Handle CTX HTTP context contract. Next. Promise void. And that returns back any. So since we're injecting the application contract into our honeypot contract, we're going to specify that this way. And then publicly, we only have the handle method within our actual middleware. So we're just defining that handle method along with the two arguments that it needs to accept and their types. Lastly here, let's do const honeypot middleware as type honeypot middleware contract. And let's export default honeypot middleware to specify that that is what's going to be exported whenever we import this particular namespace. Okay, next let's go ahead and create our actual configuration file. Now for this, we're actually going to want it to be created inside of the end user's project so that they can edit it as they wish. So for files like that, where we want to inject them directly into the user's project, we want to put those inside of a directory called templates. So here we'll just put templates and honeypot.txt. So we want this to be a text type. And then within here, we just want to define the actual configuration the exact same way that we would want it to be plopped inside of the end user's project. So within the actual package that we're referencing this off of, I went and put a ton of comments. So if you want to view the comments, you can go ahead and go through the official repository that the actual package is using um, and read through those. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and keep things nice and concise by just leaving the comments out for right now. So let's do honeypot config. We'll import the type here from at IOC atacasts honeypot. <clears throat> so whenever we write this code, we need to think of it as though we are inside of the end user's project and not within our particular package repository here. So whenever we import it, we're going to have the IOC container available to us as well as our actual namespace. So here we're just importing the type from our own namespace. And then we'll want to export const honeypot config, define it the type of honeypot config so that it has some typing to it. And we'll have our fields, which will be an array of strings. So we can define some default fields here. Now, whenever it comes to honeypots, the more realistic the field is, the more likely it is that the robot or bot is going to actually fill the field out. So it might not catch it with these. These were just kind of placeholders. But first name and last name, it should. However, whenever it comes to actually using the honeypot within your project, you're not going to want these to collide with any of your actual form fields. So if you have a first name or last name that you actually need to collect, you'll want to change these within your configuration. Uh, but for baseline values, the first name, last name is okay here. And then we will have flash on failure, which will default to true. We'll go ahead and set a default flash message and a flash key. And then we just have the redirect properties here. So redirect on failure and redirect to as null. So this is our base config. Uh, this will be plopped inside of the end user's project that they can then edit as they wish. And then we have our typings here to ensure that everything remains in check with what our package actually requires. All right, last thing to do code wise is to finish up our provider. So let's go ahead and import our middleware. So const honeypot middleware equals require. We'll go into the source directory here, middleware and honeypot middleware and then we'll just return that back out so honeypot middleware like so now for the boot method we're going to want to define the component that the user can use to drop the actual fields into their form so first things first we're going to want to resolve the binding for view so let's do const 
view equals this app container resolve binding Adonis core view. Next, we're going to want our honeypot config so that we can actually loop over the fields that we want, need to inject. So this will be const honeypot config equals this app container. We can resolve the binding here as well to get Adonis core config so that we can now get the key from the config for honeypot dot honeypot config. So whenever we do honeypot dot honeypot config, essentially that's just going to look inside of the config directory for a file called honeypot, which is then where we go into the dot honeypot config, where we have our honeypot config export. So that's what that is doing there. We also did that within our middleware as well. A little bit easier to explain it once we actually have the files in line though. So, okay, and let's go ahead and create our field now. So let's do const field template honeypot config dot fields dot and we'll just loop over them with a map so f for field and then we'll just define our actual input so input type equals text class we'll put on o bother name equals f and we'll end our field lastly we just want to join those together so this is just going to be a string of all of our actual input fields from our config file. Lastly, let's just register the actual component. So we'll do view register template, we'll give it a name of honeypot. So that will be the actual component name. And then we will define for the template, just do backticks here. So we're going to definitely want to drop our field template in there, which is all of our individual field inputs. However, we also need to hide this from the end user, but still make it visible for bots. Your first thought might to just be to tack a style display none on there, but the bots tend to look for that. So the best way to do it is to just hide it with CSS. Now, this isn't the best way to plop this into somebody's project, but it's the best way that I could think of for right now. So all that we're just going to do is plop a style tag right before the fields, and we'll just add in the class obother with an opacity of zero, position absolute, top zero, left zero, height zero, width zero, and a Z index of negative one. And that should hide it from the end user, but still make it perfectly visible to bots. All right, so next, whenever you configure a package within your Adonis.js project, you might notice that there's some instructions that get plopped into the terminal that says, would you like to view these within your terminal or would you like to open them in the browser? So we can add that to this project as well. To do this, let's just, within the root, create a file called instructions.md. And within here, we can just define a simple instruction and it's just any markdown that you might need to provide. So here we can do the Atacast package at Atacast's repot has been successfully configured before you begin, please register the below named middleware inside your start slash kernel.ts file. And then here we can do TypeScript server middleware register named honeypot import at IOC honeypot. All right. And that will just display this markdown file as visual instructions within the actual terminal for the user. Now, in order to actually get these inside of our build, we are going to need to add in a copy instruction to our package.json build method. Um, so in order to do that, we are going to need a dependency onto our package itself called copy files. So let's go ahead and install that. So npm i copy files, which should add it into a dependency. And then up in our scripts, let's go ahead and add an additional one called copy files. And this will just run copy files from the templates directory, any.txt into the build and npm run. Go ahead and copy the instructions md using an instructions md command as well. So we will do copy instructions md which will run copy files 
instructions.md into the build folder. And then within our compile command where we're running npm run lint, npm run clean, and tsc to convert to TypeScript, let's go ahead and at the end of that add and and npm run copy files. So now we should be good to go ahead and run build, which will run compile, which will run lint, clean, tsc, and copy files. So let's go ahead and run npm run build. Oops, it's, yeah, yeah, we did not uh, install lint in this, so we can go ahead and get rid of the lint actually. All right, let's try that once more. All right, looks like we got a number of specific errors to Adonis.js's core here. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into our TS config and let's add an additional compiler option here called skip lib check. And we'll set that to true. All right, with that set, let's go ahead and try this once more. There we go. Okay, so now everything completed successfully. Now that we're kind of skipping the library check here. And you should now see a build folder within your package here with an Adonis.js typings with those built out, your honeypot provider with that built out, your source files, your templates with your configuration file in there, as well as your instructions being copied over. If you have all that stuff, then everything so far is going successfully for you. We really only have one step left before we're ready to go ahead and declare this package ready to ship. So let's dive back into our package.json file here and let's scroll down towards kind of the bottom here, let's go underneath our files here. Well, so actually within our files, we're going to want to change these all together. So files is going to be anything that we want our package to actually include whenever somebody installs it. So we're going to want pretty much everything that we have within our build folder here. So let's add in build our Adonis typings, build our providers, our build source, our build templates and our build instructions.md. Now all of the required files should actually be installed whenever the user installs our particular package. Next, what we want to do is actually inform Adonis what particular files within our project it should care about for particular things. So to do that, there is an Adonis JS key here that we can add. We can specify that the instructions MD is within the build instructions.md file. And then next for the types and providers here, instead of defining a specific path within the package to look for these, this will be what should be appended into the TS config and the Adonis RC.json file for the types and the providers array. So instead of doing a particular field, instead what we're going to want to do is the actual package name. So this will be Adacast.com for me, Adonis.js, Honeypot. And then the same thing for the providers, which will be an array at Adacast.com slash Adonis.js, Honeypot. And then lastly, we need to define what to do with the templates. So templates, we can specify that within the config, our Honeypot.txt file should be added. So here our honeybot.txt file will be moved over into the user's config folder as a TypeScript file. And we should be good to go ahead and save that. And once you get everything else kind of flushed out, you get all your descriptions and everything in place, you should be A-OK -okay to go ahead and put this out for use. Now, obviously, if you're going to actually put this out for public use, you're going to want to do additional checks to make sure it's safe for everybody to use. Things like validating your commit, things like maybe using prettier or something like that so that it's easier for other people, ESLint, to contribute into it, your editor config, things like that. You might want to run these additional tasks so that you have them within here, including maybe putting a readme file in there as well. There's a task for that too. But with that code in place, you should be good to go ahead and move forward from here. This should be a good, at least starting point for you to move forward with what other package you might want to build.